Well, hello and welcome YouTube. Mr. Robinson back here with yet another brand new exciting video, all math-based of course, and uh, it is an honor and a privilege to have you step into my virtual math classroom that happens to be playing Monday Night Football in the background. Got some Raiders beating up on the Broncos. Let's see if that keeps up. Um, I'm going to be doing combining like terms with you here, and mostly just practice problems. I'm not going to be teaching it too much. I'll say a short blip in the beginning. Don't want to get too deep into it. I want to get the practice problems done. Near the end of the uh, practice problems, though, there are some problems that involve distribution. You know, if you don't know the distributive property, go check up on it. I do have a video on it. See how those practice problems work and then come back. I'm going to caution you on some ways that you might slip up with distributive property, but I want to get on going. So uh, a little bigger version of me right here in the corner because I'm only going to be doing the odd problems over here. So let's talk about combining like terms. Combining like terms basically has to do with adding and subtracting terms that belong together and can be cohesive together. Like five plus three, those terms are alike and I can make eight. But five plus X, I can't combine because it has to do with X being an unknown. It doesn't merge in the same way. But I can do five X plus three X. Those two can add together. And the basic rule is this. This is basically what I'm gonna get it down to. If you have terms that share the same variables, like these two k's here, like these two n's right here, like these two x's here, if you have terms that can sh that share the same variables, keep that variable and add the coefficients together, or subtract them, whatever, but merge the coefficients together into one term. Terms with variables and terms with constants cannot add alike. I can't also add something like x squared plus 3x together because these are terms of different degrees. Or I can't add 3xy plus 6x together because this one has a y in it and this one does not. So like terms really just means same variable, same exact variables, and same degrees or no variables at all. And by degrees I mean exponents, these guys right here. So let's go ahead and get started with it. Um, as long as you know how to do some basic addition, it's going to pan out just fine. And I'll show you some other tips and tricks along the way you can do to not mess up later. Okay, number one, we have negative 6k plus 7k. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do negative 6 plus 7. But in doing so, you know, negative 6 plus 7 equals 1. So my result here, again, keep the k and include the coefficient in. That equals 1k. Now normally you're gonna see on an answer key, it'll probably just say equals K because it's implied that the one is already in front there. It's something you should know, okay? At this point, based on videos we've done or problems you've done, you should know that. And that's the answer. That's, that's all there is to it. Okay, okay, number three. Now N minus 10 cannot combine. Nine uh, N minus three can't combine. Negative 10 plus nine N can't combine. But the negative 10 can combine with the three right here, for example. I'm going to go ahead and circle this one up right here and this one up right here. And the uh, ends, I'm going, to, I'm going to draw a nice triangle around them, n and 9n. What I'm just showing you is that the terms that are alike are the ones that I give the same shape and color to. So if I made a nice big triangle right here, maybe I rewrite these so they're right next to each other, n plus 9n. This is never required, but it's something that you might want to consider practicing from the very beginning if you're not sure what's up. Uh, with the blue ones here, notice that the 10 is negative, and this is an important facet. If I'm going to reorder my terms, I better make sure that I keep the sign that's in front with my value. There's a negative 10, and there's a negative 3. Negative 3. So these two terms can combine together because they don't have any variables, and you've done that your entire life. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13, and n plus 9n, remember, it's implied that if it's n, there's a 1 in front. So make sure you add 1 with 9, and 1 plus 9 is 10, so n plus 9n becomes 10n. It's 10n minus 13. Now I'm not going to do that kind of thing every time. I'm probably going to kind of stop right now already from doing it. But there are other ways that you can, you can reorder your terms. That's the point. If you want to reorder things so that they're next to each other, so you don't make the mistake of forgetting something, that is totally up to you, and it'll work out. I'll show you other venues as well. Number five, negative r minus 10r. Same thing as before. There is a one in front of here that you cannot see. Make sure that you pay attention to that. Negative one minus 10. Go further left. It's like adding one with 10, but make your answer negative. That becomes negative 11. Don't forget your variable, r. Because the terms are alike, that's how they combine. Okay. That's, that's the end goal behind all of these when it comes to simplifying. That's what they're asking for. Combine like terms. 
Number seven, 11r minus 12r. Well, 11 minus 12 is negative one, so this becomes negative one r. Hang on, my sleeves. So this becomes negative one r. And of course, if you look at an answer key or something, you might just see negative r like that. So that's what combining like terms looks like. Some problems are easier than others, and I just mosey on along. It'll just keep going until they get more difficult. Let's keep it nice and simple. Negative 8x minus 11x. Again, the terms are alike. They both end in x to the first power here. So negative 8 minus 11 is negative 19. And of course, include the x. Now, if you want to check and see what the heck you're doing with any of these, what any of these things mean, and, and this is me barely talking about the combining like terms, but negative 8x means negative 8 times x. And negative 11x means negative 11 times x. And negative 19x means negative 19 times x. So if you want to know if you're right, if you simplify them, Try and substitute a variable in for x and see if you get the same answer out from what you put in in the first bit. Remember, we're not solving for variables here. We're just simplifying the expression that's applied. There's no equation. We're just simplifying. So if I look back and I want to double check and say, is, is making sense what I'm doing? Try and put in a number. Try, try putting in 3. What's negative 8 times 3 minus 11 times 3? Is that the same thing as negative 19 times 3? Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. Negative 11 times 3 is negative 33. Negative 19 times 3 is negative 57. Negative 24 minus 33 actually just so happens to be negative 57. So this checks out. They are the same thing. You see, when you simplify an expression, you are not changing the value of what's there. You're just changing the way that it looks. That's really what simplifying an expression means. Give a different way to make what you have written appear but maintain its value, and that's exactly what we did. If I substitute in three in here, I still get negative 57, regardless whether it's smaller or bigger. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Let's do the next problem here. Let's look at number 11. 5n plus 11n. 16n, I'm not gonna double check that one. So some of those problems down that road get a little easier. Hopefully they get a little trickier here now that you have multiple terms, I can play with these again. Hopefully you're making sense of it now. Okay, number 13, now you don't just combine everything straight up. You gotta take a look and make sure that certain things combine and don't. Now, here's, um, here's me doing the same thing as before with the circles and triangles without drawing circles and triangles. Just find things that are alike and then write, rewrite them next to each other. And here's kind of a cool way of doing it. Let's find all the things that end in R and then let's write them next to each other. So, how about 12R? Let's write that, and let's cross out 12r now that you've written it, so you know I've taken care of that expression. 3r plus 3r. Cross that one out, we've taken care of it. Isn't that kind of cool? So now you don't go like, did I already have that before? And I know there are only four terms here, but if you get a lot bigger scenarios, you might not be sure where things went, so crossing it out kind of helps. Plus 5, minus 5, I'm not going to cross those two out. I think we can take care of those. Well, actually, now I literally might cross those two out. What is five minus five? That's zero. So you might say cancels out. For a moment, I'll keep them here. 12r plus three r equals 15r. And five minus five is zero. So that's plus zero there. Of course, I'm just gonna write this as 15r. Once you have plus zero, just like the one in front as a coefficient, it's implied that the plus zero is there. We just leave it though. It's, it's implied we're adding zero. Number 15, n minus 4 minus 9. Okay, now nothing's combining with the n in this case. So I'm just going to leave that n as is. It doesn't combine with anything. But negative 4 minus 9 do combine. Now be careful. Don't just do 4 minus 9. This is a negative 4 minus 9 right there. And that becomes negative 13. So that equals n minus 13. 1n minus 13. Number 17, negative 3x minus 9 plus 15x. Okay, let's try the reordering this time without crossing things out. What if I just what if I just place the 15x in front? There are a lot of good reasons I might look to do that. Let me try that again. There are a lot of good reasons I might try and do that, especially because the 15x is bigger and it's positive. Positive 15x minus, notice the minus, minus 3x minus 9. I like that rewrite. Now the x's are together, 15 is larger, and subtracting the next number. I can do this math a lot easier than that one. I mean, we, we can. I think we can all agree this would be a little bit easier whether or not you could do it. 15x minus 3x combined, that becomes 12x, and we got minus 9. 
right there. Okay. See, 10 minutes in. I'm going to get this done within 20, I assume. Distribution's coming up, though. We'll see how long that takes. Number 19, negative 16n minus 14n. Now that you've seen a couple, I think you can make sense of it. Just make sure you do the subtraction right. This becomes negative 30n. They're both negative. They go larger like you're adding, but the answer is negative. Negative 30n. Okay. Okay. A couple things on the... Uh, the rest of the problems are all distribution here that we're going to be doing. Now, keep in mind, we have to still follow PEMDAS, order of operations. That means that parentheses come before exponents, come before multiplication and division, come before addition and subtraction. Now, if you can't do anything within the parentheses, like here, I can't combine like terms. And I don't think you're going to be able to combine like terms in any of the parentheses problems. But after that, then you look to multiplication. I've seen a couple of students do something like, oh, let's do negative 4 plus 7. Let's go ahead and add those and get 3, and then do something here. You can't do it that way. We don't add before we multiply. Remember, there's multiplication going on right here. So be very careful of that. 7 multiplies with the 1 and the negative 3m before the negative 4. But then you might be asking, how do we combine like terms? We don't until we get things out of parentheses. So one of the rules of simplification, you see up top here, it's going to say, Simplify each expression. One of your simplification rules is no parentheses. Get them all out of there. Distribute everything so like terms can combine. And if later you need to factor for something else, go ahead. But simplify it all first. Get all that stuff taken care of as soon as you're able to. And then it kind of starts to clean other things up. It's, it's pretty nice how that goes along. Okay, so uh, we are on number 21. Number 21, so I'm going to distribute the 7 into the 1 and the negative 3m. And again, if you didn't see the distribution video, make sure you go back and pay attention to that one. So this becomes negative 4 plus, this is 7 times 1. Now, 7 times negative 3m, that's negative 21m, like that. Okay, a lot of people will put pluses by accident there, just, you know, some people will, some people won't. This isn't one of the harder problems to do with it, though, so be wary. Okay, now this is like all of our other problems that we had, and now we can combine like terms. Is it true negative 4 combines with 7? I guess it is, but that's because 7 was multiplying with 1. We, you know, not that we knew that or not, but also 3 isn't now multiplying with this negative 3. It's still a 7 here, so a lot of things to um, be aware of. Negative 4 plus 7, like 7 minus 4, that's 3, so you get 3 minus 21m. If you write it in standard form, it would be negative 21m plus 3. Notice how the 21 stays negative. No matter which way you write it, the 21m stays negative. Okay, number 23. Now, with this problem here, notice that you're subtracting a grouped quantity in parentheses. It's subtracted. What I would recommend that you do is treat it like there's a negative 1 in front of here because there kind of is. We're not going to change the value. We're just going to change their sign maybe. So how do you distribute, and keep in mind, this is a negative one right here. How do you distribute a negative one into this thing right here? Make sure that the negative one goes into both. And here's actually how I'm gonna best do it before I even distribute, so check this one out. This is a nice foolproof method. I'm gonna turn this minus, I don't do this often, I'm gonna turn this minus into a plus negative. So I'm gonna turn it into this. Negative two n plus negative one times uh, 9 minus 10n. Why did I do that? Because for your sake, it might be easier for you to recognize the fact that a negative 1 is going to be distributing into both of these. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, when I did the distributive property, I did this kind of parentheses thing a lot. I feel like I'm going to have hiccups now. I um, did this parenthesis thing a lot. Negative 2n plus negative 1 is multiplying with 9 plus negative 1 is multiplying with negative 10. Negative 10 n, excuse me, like that. That's a safe way of making this happen. And if you know how to multiply these, good for you. You're on your way. All right, let's finish this one off. This is negative 2 n, negative 1 times 9, that is negative 9, so minus 9. Negative 1 times negative 10 n is positive 10 n negative 2n minus 9 plus 10n. Maybe you've recognized the fact now that these two will combine, those two that are underlined. So let's do negative 2n plus 10n. 10n minus 2n, that becomes 8n. So we get 8n minus 
nine. That's the result. These two do not com these two do not combine after that. So um, to look back at this problem again, because you probably won't do that whole negative one business each time. The way that I kind of say these, especially to my class, that I'll be saying is distribute the negative. This negative applies to every term inside here, and essentially what happens is the signs just change. All did someone score? Oh, 21 to six, I think. Is the signs just change in here? This nine turn negative, take a look. This nine turn negative, this negative 10 n turn positive right there. So it was really a sign change that happened. I distribute the negative into the quantity. Just don't just subtract the first term. Subtract anything that is inside that grouping. Okay, number 25, it's technically possibly a relatively easier problem because there's no negatives to take care of here. So let's go and distribute the 10 into 6a and into negative 1. That gives you 9a plus 10 times 6 is 60. So that's 60a minus 10. One thing I want to state very quickly here is that multiplication and division don't follow the same rules as addition and subtraction. And normally people think of multiplication and division as more complex. By and large, sometimes it is. But for me, when it comes to fractions or rules with exponents or rules with variables, I think multiplication is a lot easier. You don't have to combine like terms. There are only so many powers of your um, variable that you're referring to. And 10 times 6a, if you have 10 times 6a like right here, there's nothing to combine or not combine. You're doing 10, this 10 times 6a is 10 times 6 times a. So 10 times 6 multiplies and that's 60 times a, which is 60a. So there's nothing to combine here. They're already merged together as if they are to combine. But you don't have to say, oh, 10 doesn't have an a in it, so I can't combine it. Just keep that in mind. 9a plus 60a equals um, 69a. And I think that's it, minus 10. I think that's all that can combine right there. Remember, this is a 9, and that's an a right there. 69a minus 10. That's the result there for 25. 20, hang on, 27. Two more problems. Number 27. Okay, you have a uh, negative in front of here. Make sure you distribute the negative. Let's see if we can do this one mentally. Um, and we distribute here as well. There are two different quantities that get distributed. There's a plus in between. Never forget that. Negative 10 times 1 is negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 9x. And I emphasize this for a reason. You know how many students I see mess this up and put a negative 90 because they ignored this negative or they ignored this negative. Oh, it happens a lot. If you accidentally ignore both, you might be in the clear. We get plus 90x, but you don't want to lean on that kind of luck. 6 times x is just 6x, right? That's what that means. 6x means 6 times x. 6 times negative 10 is negative 60, okay? So combine like terms. This 9, 90x plus 6x combines to become 96x. And this negative 10 and negative 60, remember they're both negative, combined to become negative 10 minus 60 is negative 70. There we go. That's 96x minus 70. Assuming I didn't do anything wrong. I could have, but uh, I don't think I did. Okay. I got one more problem for you, and it's kind of more of the same from the last problem we just did. Um, I'm going to distribute a negative 3 into here and distribute a 5 into here. Okay. So here we go. Negative 3 times these guys here and 5 times these guys here. Boom, boom. All right. That gives me negative 3 times 10b. That's negative 30b. And then times negative 3 times 10 is negative 30. Okay. And then plus 5 times b plus 5 times 2. Okay. And again, if you have questions on the distribution, there's a whole video uh, that is uh, referring to that. Hopefully, this is kind of covering some of that anyway. All right. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. I'm going to rewrite them next to each other this time. I'll do negative 30b plus 5b minus 30 plus 10. And when all combines and all is well, that becomes negative 25. Remember, it's getting closer to zero. Negative 25b. Negative 30 plus 10 is minus 20. And there, there you have it. There it is. That's it. So those are the practice problems. That's the idea of combining like terms that you got to be super duper cautious of when it comes to these. I'm not going to do this full problem here, number 30, but here's another example. You might remember to distribute this negative in front. By and large, people do. So negative 7n minus 21. But I can't tell you how many times people forget to distribute this negative here. 
that minus eight, people say minus and then they do eight times one and then eight times eight n like this. And the problem is this negative eight should have distributed into a positive eight n. This shouldn't have been a plus 64. It should have been a minus, a minus 64 n right here. So that's one of those things that you gotta distribute the negative into both. And if you have trouble with it, that's why I did that plus negative in that one problem earlier. So keep that in mind. All right, so that'll do it for this video here. I wanted to wrap it up within 20 minutes. Looks like I did so here. Um, enjoy this combining like terms, practice, problem stuff. If you have more questions, ask in the comments below or see me, what have you. My name's Mr. Robinson. I just dropped my pen and let's go Raiders, huh?